Oh, yo, Google, don't scrape my content. Robots.txt files uh, on the decline. How about transactions in search? Can you buy on Google? Can you check out on Google? I missed you two weeks and a lot has happened, but I was off for the fourth. Hope you had a bang like I did. We are back, the SEO Weekly, so much to cover. So let's dive in. Welcome back to the SEO Weekly, where queries are weird, advice is controversial, and everything depends. I'm your host, Garrett Sussman of iPoll Rank, and every week I cover everything going on in the world of SEO. We're talking Google updates, blog posts, webinars, podcasts, communities, SEO, Twitter, if it still exists, you name it, I'm on it. If you're into this stuff, please subscribe to the channel, give us a like, share on the socials, Leave me a comment. I genuinely appreciate it. There's so much to cover with two weeks off the books. Let's dive in. So last week in the world of Google, they announced a major initiative all around consent to have your content included in LLMs. So can your content be included to train ChatGPT for generative AI content, which is a really big deal because at, up to this point, there has not been any consent. Now, historically, past 30 years, Google's used, along with many other search engines, robot.txt files. They've respected the directives in a robot.txt file on whether or not your website should be crawled by Googlebot and other search engines. We wrote a whole great post about it on iPoll Rank. Michael Glavick wrote all about robot.txt files. But this initiative is to talk about what are some other ways that we should get consent from publishers before content is scraped and used in building these major large language models. Now, it's a really cool concept in theory. Obviously, it's being launched by Google, which means that not other other LLMs don't necessarily have to abide by it, but it's good that Google started it. I think a lot of SEOs are interested in it, but they are skeptical. It's something that we want to pay attention to. At the very least, if Google requires consent from publishers before their own large language models are scraping the content, that feels like a very good step in the right direction for generative AI. What do you think? Another year, another season that Google is potentially messing with Black Friday and e-commerce and the holiday shopping season. So email sent out that caught the waves, actually thanks to Kevin Indig made a big deal about it and was included on search engine land. But basically Google is sunsetting their program buy on Google. It's complicated. Not a lot of merchants really were using it, but in essence, the idea was you'd be able to find the list on Google and go through the purchasing process, right? What they are launching actually instead, so this will be sunsetted around the end of September. They're launching checkout on Google, which is going to be a more streamlined journey where you can click like basically buy a product from Google search listings and then go to the checkout page. So much quicker streamlined. You can see in the image what that might potentially look like. And there is obviously speculation as to how close this ultimately will be from just a buy right on the search engine without ever having to leave in any capacity, which makes sense as generative AI, the SGE, the search generative experience and e-commerce is trying to make that whole journey happen on Google without going to affiliate marketers or going to comprehensive review sites, doing it all there. So very interesting, important to pay attention to for e-commerce and merchants about how you can continue to leverage your visibility in search results and get people to actually buy in a much quicker process without as many middlemen other than Google. What do you think? Are you nervous about this? Do you think this is great for e-commerce? Let me know in the comments. Curious to hear your thoughts. 
So July 1st came and went, and it happened. Universal Analytics has been sunset, and GA4 is here. Now, there was some weirdness of like still recording some information, and I'm sure some things have fallen through the cracks, but the reality is we are in a GA4 world now. In fact, Brie Anderson, who has a great course all on GA4 and getting it implemented, did a fun little ridiculous eulogy. Um, If you absolutely miss GA4. Actually, uh, awaku.com on Twitter posted a Looker Studio report that actually recreates all of Universal Analytics. So you can connect that. That link is in the description. And if you have any questions for GA4, you haven't set it up or you already did, but you're you're just now actually using it. Brie Anderson, Dana DiTomaso, Krista Seiden are all experts in the software. If you're still using it, hit them up on the Twitters. uh, If Twitter is still around by the time this is published. Uh, But yeah, monumentous event, GA4, they actually said it kind of, and they actually did it kind of UA. It's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. Okay, did you did you miss AI talk? Did you miss any AI talk? Well, don't worry, search generative experience still in beta in experimentation mode. And I hope you're not sick of it because I'm not. I love talking about this stuff. In fact, I actually was on a webinar, a panel discussion with Botify a couple of weeks ago. I mentioned it on the SEO Weekly while well, it happened, and you can watch the replay. I was joined by Dimitri Gamarnik and Elliot Haynes, and we talked all about like the practical applications of what you can do. And don't get me wrong, it's all fundamentals, right? It's all making sure that you have a good site architecture, that you have really helpful content that covers the entire you know, journey of your customers that you use a lot of EEAT. We covered it across the board. Really great conversation. Check that out. It was how to prepare your SEO strategy for Google's AI powered search results. Obviously it's speculation. Nobody actually knows, but you know, the clues are there. And speaking of speculation, a much more kind of philosophical theory based, what does the future look like panel was also held by ClearScope with the big guns, like the heavyweights of the SEO, including uh, the founder of iPoll Rank and CMO of AIPRM, Michael King. He's also joined by ClearScope, Bernard Wong, Aleda Solis, Dr. Marie Haynes, Kevin Indig, uh, Gaetano uh, Denardi. It was an awesome conversation just to you know hear the speculation, what they think is going to happen. Like I said, nobody actually knows, but you can connect some dots and it's fun to play that game. So no big other news there that kind of caught us off guard, but if you want some really interesting conspiracy theory and also base and evidence conversation, check out that panel. So whether you love or hate social media, it's always entertaining in some capacity, right? Well, Twitter had its masterclass in mess ups when it comes to SEO, possibly, As Cyrus Shepard points out, the biggest SEO mess up in the history of SEO. In essence, long story short, a contract lapsed with Google. So Twitter basically had a ton of broken 404 pages and kind of a self-inflicted DDoS attack. So basically you couldn't, if you weren't logged into Twitter, you couldn't see any of the tweets. And as a result, there was basically 32% reduction in visibility, according to Systrix, in 24 hours. It's like hundreds of millions fewer URLs than the previous week. This was disastrous. Now, there was a lot of pushback in the SEO community, basically saying Twitter doesn't need SEO, that Twitter doesn't need that visibility, that Google needs Twitter more, which there probably is some truth to, but that much visibility, it's not like Twitter is the biggest website in the entire world. There are consequences. Now, since then, most of the visibility has returned. We know that big brands typically play by different rules than the rest of us. So they'll probably be fine in the grand scheme of things, but it created a huge amount of drama, entertaining to say the least. One result was, and kind of another big announcement, is Facebook, Meta, Instagram released their big Twitter competitor, Threads. Yeah, so Twitter now has a competitor, which is like a text-based, you know, 
meta app, right? So everyone's on it. And actually Lydia Infante put together a list of all the SEOs who are on threads. Will it take hold? I don't know. Mastodon didn't really take off. Blue Sky, which is the other more recent Twitter competitor alternative. Some people are doing that. Threads, will it happen? I don't know. I'm not on there. I don't have an Instagram at this point. So I'm not on threads, despite your your like cries of wanting to follow what I'm going to say on threads. I'm not there. But check out Lydia Infante's post. She goes through all the SEOs that are on there if you want to join that community. What do you think? Are you a Twitter user? We're going to get to a little more Twitter in a second, but will you use threads? How's it impact your SEO knowledge? Because we all, a lot of us say we we depend on on Twitter and and that community for SEO. If everyone leaves, well, you know what'll happen. Anyway, moving on. So interesting post on LinkedIn by Tomek Rutsky, who's over at Onely, talking about how Google's URL inspection tools no longer mimic Google Buy and why that's problematic for diagnosing technical SEO issues. He goes through like basically how you need to whitelist the IPs. It could get a little complicated. Check out the link in the description notes as to how he goes into that further, but something to pay attention to when you're trying to identify why something might be not rendered properly or not show up properly when it comes to your technical SEO audit. Great post. So Dr. Marie Haynes puts together a really helpful newsletter every week. Every now and again, she'll dive deep into a major, major article. In fact, she's written a book in the past about the quality rater guidelines. She's obsessed with EEAT and most recently with generative AI in SEO. So she puts out this epic article last week that's Google's helpful content and other AI systems may be impacting your site's visibility. She's become obsessed with what Google classifies as its helpful content system, which is based on signals. She breaks down what signals are compared, you know, as opposed to factors and how they influence, you know, whether content is considered helpful or not and should be ultimately ranked highly surfaced based on user search intent. If you're searching for something, how likely are the results going to be helpful exactly what you're looking for? She gives examples with websites when, you know, the most helpful content that the person is looking for is right at the top as opposed to some BS content like text that, you know, when you do a recipe, like perfect example. When you look at a recipe, you don't want to read the entire person's story and then get to the recipe. You want the recipe at the top. And those types of sites are being rewarded more and more. So she breaks it down in terms of the quality rater guidelines, how that works, how the helpful content updates, and there's potentially another one coming. Google's let us know um, what you need to consider in terms of EEAT and how it all comes together holistically to make sure that you're surfaced in the rankings. Great article. Check it out. Awesome article on SEO testing by Ryan Jones talking all about how to improve and produce really great SEO workflows. So this might have to do with content optimization, click the rate optimization, or even content strategy. Ryan breaks down his processes, how you can use tools like SEO testing, but how you can make sure that you're doing it effectively to improve your content, improve your rankings, drive more traffic, because even if you rank highly, if the click-through rate isn't great, then what's the value there and how you can test it along the way. Good article worth checking out. I like the way that Ryan breaks it down. One of the appeals of things like ChatGPT is they can, you know, it can help you solve really specific personalized problems. But it's really nice when you do have an expert writing an article that really identifies exactly what you're looking for. So if you're in B2B and you're dealing with setting up GA4, you know, kind of that big thing I was talking about earlier. Gemma Fontenay brought, broke down like a really great play-by-play -play on how you should set up your events to be able to track your specific KPIs, specifically for B2B in terms of leads or video watches or file downloads. She has naming conventions. She talks through Google Tag Manager, how to set it all up. Really effective, practical article that could be useful for you if you're in B2B and you still need to set up that tracking appropriately. Go check it out. Okay, so news SEO is cutthroat. And if you're doing syndication with partners and all of a sudden your partners, the syndicators are ranked higher than you, it could be really frustrating and completely thrash your business model. So John Shahada put together, of News Dash, put together a really great article explaining what might be happening and what you could potentially do to prevent it. 
A lot of issues surrounded around canonicalization and whether Google kind of respects that. Issues around whether, you know, the syndicated partner actually has a higher authority than you and just ranks anyway. And then speed is another big one. If they just get it out faster, then he goes through why you need to get the right canonicals in place and how to mediate that. And ultimately, whether or not you want to decide to syndicate to specific partners and consider that. Great article by John. Now, it was interesting. Uh, Danny Sullivan, uh, Google Liaison, responded via Twitter with kind of some rebuttals of how Google tries to handle syndication and canonicalization. It comes up all the time in the world of SEO news because it is very challenging and very frustrating, as I mentioned. Check out John's article and then also check out Danny's rebuttal with the resources that he provides. You know, Obviously, whatever happens in practice is the reality, but you need to be armed with how to protect yourself as best you can to make some, some critical decisions there. So last week, we had the epic, major, crossover SEO podcast event you've been waiting for. I had Jack Chambers Ward of Candor Agency join me on the Rankable podcast, and then for part two, I joined him on the Search with Candor podcast. Part one, we talked all about Google bias. Why is Google bias an issue? Is Google bias? What happens with the queries? And what if the bias comes from us? Like what we put in there in the queries, should we expect bias results? And as a result, who should be responsible? Should it be Google for getting it right? Or should it be publishers for not producing bias content? I mean, bias is inevitable. We had a great conversation. His voice is like butter. The dude's been podcasting for a hot minute and knows what he's talking about. Really fun conversation. And then I joined him to all, talk all about Google's perspectives filter, right? So that got rolled out a few weeks ago. In essence, it's the idea that when you're looking at a query, in addition to like images and news and videos, you'll see this perspectives where it gives you multiple views sourced by, for the most part, social content like YouTube, TikTok, Reddit, Quora, and then giving you these, these multiple perspectives. I shared my perspective on why it's problematic, like ranking perspectives, whether it's based on popularity or any other reason, can be an issue. Like how are, like Google decided to choose it. What is perspectives, what shows up, what doesn't show up. Ultimately, really fun conversation. I highly recommend you watch the whole episode. We got into it. Google bias, perspectives, crossover event. If you're into comic books, you know, that was that jazz. That's it. Another episode of the SEO Weekly in the books. I hope you enjoyed it. I missed you. This is so much fun. I love talking about this. And you know, with two weeks, I'm sure there was a ton that I missed. If there's ever some content, SEO news, SEO articles or podcasts that you think I should cover on the show, please hit me up. I'd love for you to do that. I'm on the Twitters or just email me, Garrett at iPullRank.com. Why not? Throw in the email out there. Anyway, Thank you so much for watching. If you're into this, please subscribe to the channel. Give us a like, leave us a comment. My name is Garrett Sussman of iPoll Rank, and I will catch you next week. See you later.